me and Liz are today in Germany in the town of Munster and I'm standing outside of Munster Peace House. Uh, Munster Peace House is significant in European history but more significantly it's important because um, it's the home of a favourite treaty that, of both me and Liz. Before we met each other we both had the same favourite treaty. We both like the Peace of Westphalia and um, the, the Treaty of Munster which is one of the two treaties that made up the Peace of Westphalia. Um, Liz likes it because of the 30 years war and I like it because of um, it's sort of the foundation of everything that came afterwards. Um, but now I'm going to pass to Liz who's going to explain why she likes the 30 years war. So the 30 years war consisted of many kind of set piece battles, a lot of sieges, a lot of going back and forth with territory. And my favourite bit about the 30 years war was essentially that it, it gets around to formulating the idea of how to treat citizens in war because Previously, it didn't really matter. There were some sort of 16th century ideas of what to do with citizens, but as the battles went back and forth over friendly territory or enemy territory, all the citizens were treated the same. The, the countryside was essentially forced to give contributions over and over and over again in the form of money, food, provisions, housing to all these soldiers. So There's no real idea of who was on our side, who was on their side. Anyway, it all culminates in 1648 with the Peace of Westphalia, where all the powers, and there were many powers, it was known as the Great War uh, before the First World War, and is was absolutely devastating. So the Peace of Westphalia wasn't just significant to end in the Thirty Years and the Eighty Years War, it was actually relevant to um, what happened, everything that happened since then. Um, it established, for instance, the international norm of sovereignty. So we now see sovereignty as this thing, which means um, the state is sort of a, it's sovereign, it can control its own affairs. Before then, everyone would have been intervening in everyone else's affairs, uh, you know, the Pope had been doing stuff, all the German states had been messing around. But this changed all that, this, this made sovereignty a thing, and basically it set up the international norm of you don't intervene in other states' affairs, and this actually lasted um, for a long time since then. Obviously, since then, it's been challenged by the concepts of human rights and individual rights, but broadly speaking, this rule still exists today. So the other really interesting thing about Munster happened uh, after the Peasants' Rebellion in the 16th century, and during kind of the height of the radical reformation, and the church beside me here is kind of a really visceral reminder of what happened during the reformation. So what happened to Munster was essentially taken over by a bunch of radical Anabaptists. So uh, they believed in adult baptism, which is no real biggie today, but was huge back then. And they took over the town. It was laid to siege by other religious kind of forces interested in a the city of Munster, but also that you know Anabaptists were around because they were not really, really at all tolerated. So at the end of the rebellion, the end of the siege, uh, all the ringleaders were killed and their bodies displayed in cages at the top of this church. The cages are still here today. 